Okay. <clears throat> we are live. Make sure everything's set up here. Perfect. Do, 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 do. All right. Gonna give everybody right. a minute or two to get in. I need to share the stream to the various uh, social medias and whatnot. You guys already know. Set up here. off okay desktop audio Welcome, welcome everyone. We got everything all set up now. We're gonna go ahead and get into it. Uh, welcome to the second episode of 904 Live, where I go over um, all the gears and techniques that you need to get started surf fishing or saltwater fishing in general. This week is going to be specifically surf fishing basics. Everything you need to get started, get out on the water and uh, catch some fish. So uh, make sure if you guys haven't already, go ahead and click that subscribe button and click the bell notification so you guys get notified whenever I upload and whenever I go live. If you guys check it out on my channel, uh, you see my banner there. I go live weekly every Monday at 7 p.m. Eastern and I upload every Thursday at 7 p.m. Eastern. Um, I go uh, about a, on a, a variety of different topics on the podcast. Last week we did the mullet run report, and then this week's going to be how to get started surf fishing. I haven't decided what it's going to be for next week, but tune in. You guys can see that. All right, uh, we're just going to dive right into it. So when you get started surf fishing, obviously the biggest thing that you need to make sure that you have and the biggest thing that you need to bring with you, of course, is your fishing poles. Uh, but breaking that down further, you've got your rod, your reel, and your line. We're going to be going into all three of those topics. The first one we're going to be going into is your rod. Your rod is the most important piece of equipment, in my opinion, that you can have out on the surf with you. Your rod depends and matters about what kind of fish you can catch, what kind of bait you can throw, all kinds of things. So if you're going to be spending money on something when it comes to surf fishing, especially right off the bat, I would highly suggest you get a great rod. Um, one of the things, <laughs> thanks James for checking me out. Um, one of the things that you want to do when you're looking for a surf rod is you want to look at the action, the lure weight, you know, how, how big of a lure, how big of a bait can you throw out. Some of them might say one to two ounces, which is not something you want because you're going to be throwing heavy baits. I mean, your sinker alone is probably going to be four ounces. So that's not going to work out. You want to look for something between, in my opinion, the five to 10 ounce range. Um, that's kind of hard to find, but most of my rods are rated between five and eight ounces, and I find that that works out pretty well. I've got one that's rated for um, eight to 12 ounces. I throw a little heavier baits on that one. But your rod is your most important piece of equipment when it comes to your actual fishing combo. I suggest a minimum 10 foot rod length. That's gonna help you kind of get out there when you need to cast far, but it's gonna have enough backbone that if you need to do something closer, you definitely can. Um, let me put that off to the side. I'm getting distracted by my phone. I got people messaging me about the podcast. Um, t -t 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 -t. let's see. So you want it strong enough to handle big fish, light enough to cast. That is kind of conflicting, but let me explain. So 
you want your rod to like you don't want such a heavy rod that when you go to cast you don't get that bend and whip action of you actually trying to cast out there uh, but you don't want such a light rod like an intercoastal rod or you know a kayak rod or something like a six foot rod that can't handle the big fish and is just going to snap if you get a big bite or something if you do everything appropriately you don't have to worry about that but 10 foot rod good all-round starter to get get you out on the water um, one of the best rods that I find and that I've used for a very long time, I use this rod for about five years already, uh, is the Daiwa Surf Rod or Surf Angler Rod or something. It's, it's an orange rod. They sell it at Walmart. It's like 22 bucks, 23 bucks, something like that. Um, one of the best rods that I've used, I suggest to everybody that wants to get started surf fishing, it's a great way to get your foot in the door. Again, this is just to get started. If you have the money to go get, you know, a pen or a star rod or something 100% do it over the bar rods um, Noel Kuhn makes them over the bar rods or he uh, he sells them definitely check those out 100% worth it you might think oh my gosh $300 for a rod that's insane why would I spend that much money on a rod I didn't understand it either until I actually got out to go use one of those rods and I realized just the sheer difference between my you know 50 60 70 dollar rods and a $300 surf rod the difference wasn't even comparable i i couldn't even you, you can't even really compare them in terms of quality and what you're getting one night you're shelling out but you get what you pay for so when you buy an expensive rod you're able to sling heavy heavy baits out there no problem you're able to hand, handle the big fish no problem it's like having a, a little moped as compared to having a ferrari it's crazy the difference but if you're just getting started you just want to get out on the surf you don't really know if it's for you yet Go spend the 20 bucks on the rod at Walmart. A little two-piece rod breaks down. Perfect for uh, any beginner that wants to get started into surf fishing. Which, once you get your rod, then you're going to need a reel to put onto it. Which will be their next segment, reels. Um, seven viewers. Oh, my God. From Wade's, what do you think of the Sputniks? Oh, my God. That Pen Fierce 8000 combo is looking juicy for 138 Academy. I'm going over that. I'm going over that. Uh, reel size. That's going to be one of the things I go over. Um, but let me go over, uh, da, 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 reels. Okay. So again, great start reel. Pen Pursuit 3. Anywhere between the 4,000 and 6,000 size. A lot of people I feel when they're just getting started into surf fishing are going to go get a crazy big size reel, like an 8,000 size combo. You don't need that if you're just getting started. You don't know if it's for you. An 8,000 size combo is not something you need right off the bat. I definitely would suggest getting it. Later, I own one or two of them. I, if, if that's what you're gonna fish for, once you get into it a little bit, you start getting a little more specialized into your combos, for sure, definitely do that. But to get started, go get the $23 rod from Walmart. Go pick yourself up a Pen Pursuit 3, like I said, 4,000, 5,000, or 6,000. Perfect size reel. Here's why I suggest the Pen Pursuit 3. It's a sealed reel, and one of the things that is going to help you whenever you're out on the surf is um, a sealed reel because things are gonna happen. Okay, I've been surf fishing almost 15 years um, and it's it, things happen. Your rod holder breaks. You get a big fish and it just yanks your rod in the water. You just set it down wrong and it falls in the sand. It's gonna get dunked. Things are gonna happen. If your reel is sealed, which means it's got rubber gaskets at the top and at the bottom to prevent you know sand and water from getting into it. It's greatly going to increase the life of your rod, uh, or I'm sorry, of your reel. That's important, again, especially in salt water because things are going to happen. The wear and tear on your reels is ridiculous, not just from catching fish, but also from being out there and actually fishing. Uh, salt water, the air, the, the salty air, the salty water, the sand. Even if you, even if your reel never touches the water, never touches the sand, whatever, it's still gonna get sand in it because that wind is gonna be whipping little particles of sand. They're gonna get in your reel. It's inevitable, it's going to happen. You 100% cannot prevent it. It's going to happen. You need to be prepared for it. So I suggest a sealed reel, Pen Pursuit 3, retails at like 50, 60 bucks, depending on what size you get. Perfect combo. So go get the $23 reel from Walmart or rod from Walmart, the Daiwa surf daiwa orange if somebody could look it up that'd be great i can't think of it off the top of my head it's it's a daiwa rod it's 10 feet it's like bright orange um or like a not even bright orange it's like a murky orange but um go get that pair it with a like i said four five or six thousand size 
Pen Pursuit 3. It's one of the cheapest sealed reels that you can get on the market that I'm aware of that I like. Um, that's what I always suggest to people. So put those together. You got anywhere from a $60 to $80 combo. Perfect to get started surf fishing, okay? It's going to help you wet a line, you know, get some baits out there. It's going to handle big fish. I've caught five foot sharks on that exact combo. Literally that exact combo I just described to you. I've caught five foot sharks on it and I've caught little tiny whiting on it. It's going to handle everything and anything you need it to, so long as you've got the proper line on it, which is going to segue, 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 Jesus, segue into our next uh, chapter, which is going to be line. What kind of line do you need on your reels? Well, depends on what kind of fishing you're going to be doing. If you're going to be doing a, just a multi-purpose style fishing, a multi-purpose kind of, I just want to go out and fish. You're not targeting anything. You're not looking for anything. You just want to fish. So that's all you're going for. So you get your combo. You head out there. What kind of line do I put on? A lot of people put too heavy of line on there, and I know I was really guilty of this. I went out there with 40, 50, 60 pound mono. Looking back, that's insane. Anybody watching this or listening to this knows that 40 to 50 or even 60 pound mono for a surf casting reel is insane unless you're doing a very specific kind of fishing. I was not. Okay, I was mad because I couldn't cast things, but I, in my mind, I'm like, well, I want to catch big fish, so I need big line. So that's my that that's what I did was I went out and got I got the big line I got the hundred pound braid I got the eighty pound braid I got the sixty pound mono the fifty pound mono even the forty pound mono that's way too heavy if you're just getting started surf fishing go grab yourself some twenty pound mono okay that's all you're gonna need go get yourself some twenty pound mono put it on your reel you'll be good to go and you're thinking twenty pound mono like it seems so thin you 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 think it's not gonna work it will and here's why. As long as your drag is adjusted correctly and when you're putting your reel and your combo and everything together you're putting the line on it if you can pull your line like if you set your drag and you can pull it and it's it's not super hard to pull but there's a little resistance there you'll be good you'll be fine you'll figure it out kind of as you're moving as you're going on where you need to put your drag but 20 pound line 20 pound mono is perfect it's got the strength to handle anything you need and it's gonna have you know the small diameter so you can actually cast out there and get your baits where you need them to um, a lot of baits when you're casting, when you're first getting out, you're going to be using shrimp, little cup bait, uh, fish bites, artificials, things of that nature. So, um, let's see, Lonesome Eye Knot said, excellent deal. That 8000 is perfect to switch over to a grouper rod for offshore fishing. Reel is worth the money. Pen surf rods are all right, I guess. So, yeah, I completely agree. Um, if you do get that 8000 combo, you can... Uh, you know, swap the reel to a different rod and go offshore with it, or you can do shark fishing with it, whatever you need to. Um, but that's more, like I said, that's more of kind of an experience style, in my opinion, a more of experience style combo that you're going to be picking up. But if you want to go get the 8,000 size reel, by all means, go ahead and get that 8,000 size reel. I did it. Plenty of other people do it, but you're going to be putting 20 pound mono on it, or you should be putting 20 pound mono on it, especially right off the bat. If you want to do more experience fishing, Please do your research, look into it more, but that's not what this video is about. This is about getting started, getting a rod and a line in the water, catching the fish. So, you get your $23 reel, or I'm sorry, $23 rod from uh, Walmart or Academy, wherever you want to get it. You got your $50 reel, you put some 20 pound mono on it, you're good to go. But what kind of rig do you need to be putting on it? What kind of, you know, bottom rig or lure or whatever you want to be throwing on it? easiest thing you can do is go get yourself a high low rig what that is is it's got a spot at the bottom for a swi or for a snap swivel that's where your weight goes and then you've got two hooks that come off it do i have any over here i don't all right and then you got two hooks that come off it and uh it can help uh do i have a marker i don't have a marker i'm not prepared for this as i was the last one but um if you've got a good reel or a good combo you can throw a variety of different things so let's see here y'all don't make fun of my drawing so a high low rig is going to just have i mean this is a super super basic kind of drawing of it but a high low rig is going to look is that going to focus or is that too bright all right there we go so a high low rig is going to look something like this you're gonna have your snap swivel at the bottom you're going to have a low hook coming off it and a high hook coming off it since the high low rig or tree rig or whatever you want to call it. And then you got a snap swivel at the top or a um, barrel swivel at the top. That's where your line attaches to. But that's the easiest thing you should be throwing. Now, when you go out 
and you're buying all this stuff and you go to the store and they tell you, oh, go ahead and get the wire one so that way things don't cut through your line. You don't have to worry about getting bit off, things of that nature. Not worth it. Don't buy the metal pre-tied rigs. There's nothing wrong with buying pre-tied rigs, but for the love of God, do not buy the wire pre-tied rigs. If it's got wire on it, you don't want it, especially in the surf, okay? It's not worth it. Get the ones that are pure mono. If you guys can't find any at Walmart or Academy or anything like that, I'm not surprised and neither should you be. Uh, you need to go to an actual surf shop or an actual fishing shop. Um, you can go to Strike Zone on Beach Boulevard. You can get them at the bait shop at the, uh, the Volano boat ramp, okay? Um, but it shouldn't have a bunch of flashy metal on it. It shouldn't have anything. The only pieces of metal on it should be the barrel swivel at the top and the snap swivel at the bottom. Everything else should be mono. and Oh, and the hooks, of course. But everything else should be mono on it. Tie that to the end of your 20-pound line, and then go get yourself some Sputnik sinkers, okay? The biggest thing that I see new people come out to the beach is they come out to the beach and they've got these pyramid sinkers. Again, I did this. I did this for a long time. You go out with three, four, five, six, even. I, I've seen eight ounce pyramid sinkers out of the beach. So when you're throwing those, that's fine. But a lot of the beaches that we have here in Jacksonville, the current's moving, it's ripping. Even on days that other people can't fish uh, because they're using these pyramid weights, what's happening is it hits the bottom and then because it doesn't have anything to hold it to the bottom except the pure weight of the pyramid sinker, it's just getting tugged all over the place. The current might pick it up and it's just gone. You're, then you're tangling lines, it's all the way down the beach, you're not holding your spot, you can't target appropriately. Don't bother with it. Don't get egg sinkers, don't get pyramid sinkers, storm sinkers, none of that. Go get some pyramid, or some pyramid. Go get some Sputnik sinkers from the sinker guy, um, Chip. He's a great guy, carried in a ton of different tackle shops. Again, uh, you can find them at Strike Zone, you can find them at the Volano Boat Ramp, you can find them at a lot of different bait shops in Jacksonville now, but Strike Zone's where I get mine. Um, oh, Resellers Reef in Orange Park. Those are the two big, or three big shops I should say I go to. So I go to the Volano Boat Ramp Bait Shop. Um, that's when I'm out fishing and I'm out doing stuff. If I'm buying terminal tackle or things of that nature, then I'm going to Strike Zone. If I want to, you know, go a little closer, I'm just on that side of town. I go to Resellers Reef on uh, 17 or Roosevelt, whatever you want to call it, in Orange Park. Definitely check those out. But the Sputnik Sinker um, weights is what you want. But you don't want the ones with the beads. So, I, again, ill-prepared, but uh, it's going to have wire tongs that kind of come up off the weight, and that's what holds it on. But you got ones that are made with beads, and then ones that are made with, like, this tubing. I don't know. Chip makes them. They're great. Uh, just ask for the Sinker Guy Sinker Weights. They're awesome. Great tips. Y'all take his advice. Thank you, Nick, for tuning in, and thank you for the praise. Um, but tie those sinkers on there. I use 4-ounce Sputnik Sinker Weights whenever I surf fish. I typically find that I don't have any problem with holding the bottom, even in super, super rough conditions. You guys can watch some of my videos. I mean, I'm out there in some pretty rough conditions. I don't have any problem holding the bottom, especially with those Sputnik weights from Chip, the sinker guy. So get yourself some of those. Again, let's review. You got your $23 rod, your $50 reel, your 20 pound mono, your mono pre-tied rig, and then your four ounce Sputnik weight. Um, 30 pound braid, all right, so let's see. Lone Samai, not I, says right on. My surf setup is 30-pound braid to swivel, 50-pound mono knocker rig, 5-ounce anchor weights. Amelia and Brings Landing are the local spots for anchors. Yeah, so that's a special rig, uh, the knocker rig. Great way. 30-pound braid is pretty similar, I think, in diameter to 20-pound mono. Very similar. I prefer mono just because I like the stretch that it gives you. You have a little more play with it as far as... Uh, abrasion and stretch a little more sensitive or it's not sensitive I'm sorry braid is more sensitive than mono but it's six half dozen the other whatever your personal preference is you know go go get whatever you like you can do 20 pound mono 30 pound braid you can do 40 pound braid really but I prefer mono that's just my personal preference um, lonesome not I also says Carolina rig never fails either with six foot leaders again excellent rig Great thing to get started into uh, and look into more as you get started into surf fishing. So, you got all your gear. You got your rigs. You got your weights. You got your hooks. You got your... What are you going to use for bait? Right? So, brings us to our next thing. Bait. What kind of bait should you be bringing with you when you're going surf fishing, when you're first getting started surf fishing? A lot of people are going to tell you um, shrimp, clams, 
fish bites, cup bait. It's all pretty much the same. What matters is the size of your bait, in my opinion. So if you've got a shrimp, you cut it, you know, if you've got a shrimp this big and it's stretched out this big, right? You cut off the tail, you get rid of that, right? And then you usually get three good size baits. You want anything, you want it about the size of your thumb, right? So if you guys look at my thumb, that's about how big you want your bait. You don't want it super big. You don't want it super small. And again, this is just to get started surf fishing. This is just to catch fish. You could catch a big fish with this stuff because I mean, I've hooked a tarpon on a piece of fish bites less than an inch big. It's insane. I've caught whiting that are about that are not much bigger than my bait to be completely honest with you on a piece of bait that big. That's that's the beauty of surfing. You never know what you're going to get. But when you're getting started, just worry about the size of your bait, okay? So when you do your fish, you do your shrimp, you do your cup bait, you do your um, fish bites, you do whatever. Just you just you don't need a huge massive piece of bait out there. Just a little piece of bait throw it out there one of the easiest things you can possibly do is go get the pre-cut fish bites from anywhere really throw it on your hook throw it out there best thing to get started you don't want to do that you want to be a little more into it go get some fresh shrimp okay never buy frozen shrimp um, from Walmart Publix Windex, anything like that if it's from a name brand store Walmart Publix I mean even if it says bait horrible don't get it don't buy it awful um, like those bumblebee bags of baits that you can buy in the fishing section at Walmart. Awful. For the love of God, don't ever buy those. Just horrible, awful bait. Uh, go to a tackle shop. Go to a seafood market. Go to anything like that. Get yourself some shrimp. Cut the tail off. Cut it into, you know, like I said, about inch size pieces, less than half, you know, half an inch to an inch size pieces. Put it on your one out to two odd bait hooks. Throw it out there. You'll be good to go. Now, one of the biggest mistakes I see people doing when they're casting out and they're using their baits is they cast it super far out into there. They throw it super far out into the surf. They throw it way past where they should. That, that's knowing how to read the beach, but worry about that at a different time of date. I'm getting ahead of myself, I'm realizing. So just <laughs> throw your line, throw your rod, or throw your line, don't throw your rod, good lord. Throw your line, throw your bait, just get it in the water and you're gonna catch something. You're gonna get a spot, a croaker, a whiting. You could even get a sand trout, really. Just depends. Um, peeled fresh dead shrimp and fish bites. Yes, exactly, Nick. Great bait. Peeled fresh dead shrimp. Fresh dead shrimp. If you go to a bait shop and you ask them, hey, do you guys have any bait? Yeah, we've got shrimp and mullet and crab. Blah, blah, blah. Ask for fresh dead shrimp. Some of the best bait you can ever get. Um, let's see. Not I says live mullet and fish bites. Great stream, dude. Oh, thank you. Appreciate that. Um, yeah, live mullet and fish bites. So this time of year, live mullet is king. You can get live mullet, and that's actually what I covered in my last live stream. So if you guys didn't see that, please go check it out. But um, if it's just a general time of year and you just want to go fishing, you just want to get a rod in the water, just go for it. Just get yourself some fish bites, get yourself some shrimp, get whatever you can. Just go chuck it in the water, all right? Just get, get, get your line out there. You're going to make mistakes. You're going to do the wrong thing. You're going to use the wrong bait. That's perfectly fine. We all do it. I'm trying to just help you get into the water as best as you possibly can. So, next thing that we're going to be getting to, uh, sand spikes. That's right, sand spikes. That was the next one. Um, another big mistake that I see a lot of people make, and again, I made. That's why I'm trying to help you. So to avoid as much as you possibly, avoid these mistakes as much as you possibly can, is your sand spikes. A lot of people go out and they buy these pre-bought um, PVC sand spikes from Walmart or Academy or Dick Sporting Goods or anything like that. And you know, you get a four or five foot sand spike and they charge you 25 bucks for it. It's insane. Don't do that. If you want the PVC rod holders, I use them for a long time, nothing wrong with them. If you want a PVC rod holder, uh, just go to a Home Depot, Lowe's, whatever. You can get a 10 foot section of, you typically want either inch and a half or two inch wide PVC pipe, like the, the diameter and in the inside. Um, that was the circumference, sorry, the diameter. Um, Two, a half, uh, inch and a half to two inch is pretty good. Um, you get a 10 foot section for like six bucks. And then you cut it, I usually do uh, either four feet, I think four feet, yeah, four feet. So I usually do four feet. So for six bucks, I get two rod holders, cut it in half, put an angle on it so you can get it in there. If you're gonna go the PVC rod holder route, I highly suggest bring yourself a rubber mallet with you when you come to the beach. Stick it in the sand, doop, 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 get it all the way down. Uh, if you want to go a step up, get yourself a metal rod holder. There's a ton of different ones you can get. Again, Noel Kuhn, he makes the over-the-rod or over-the-bar surf rods. 
Uh, he makes aluminum rod holders that are, again, some of the best I've ever possibly seen. If you guys want to get an outstanding rod holder, go get one from Noel. They're 40 bucks, worth every penny. They're not gonna rust, they're gonna hold everything, not gonna get ripped out, not a problem with that. Definitely go pick yourself up one of those. Um, you're gonna be able to tell the rod holders or the metal rod holders that you, you should get because they're gonna have kind of a point to them, kind of a, um, like the, the metal isn't just gonna be a flat piece of metal, it's gonna come to a point. It's gonna be a triangle running all the way down. Um, da, da, da. Cheap homemade. Oh yeah, so I have made, I've got a video on how to make rod holders out of the green garden posts that you get at, I get mine at, I wanna say Lowe's or Home Depot? Lowe's, there's a Lowe's around the corner here. Uh, I get mine at Lowe's, the the rod, it's, or the, um, the stake itself, I get the four foot ones. The stake itself is four bucks. I get it two nuts, two bolts. That's like a dollar twenty something like that. And then the piece of PVC is about a dollar. So you can make your own rod, metal rod holders at home that are super light, go into the sand, is super easy for about six bucks, give or take. You got to put a little bit of effort to do it again. I got a video on that if you guys want to see it. Go look up cheap rod holder on my channel. I'll give you the full rundown on how to make it, how to do everything. That is what I've been using for the past two and a half years or so now. Two reasons why I like these. One, I typically take four rods out with me, and when I do it, I can connect or interlock two of them together so that the bottom of one state goes into the PVC of one, and then the bottom of the other state goes into the other PVC pipe. That really helps with transportation and getting things to the car, or from the car to the beach. Um, take four of those out, they interlock, Super helpful, super easy. The other reason I like those, and just and it's like a cheap version of Noel's basically, is when you put it in the water or put it in the sand, you don't have to sit there and beat it with a mallet to get it into the sand. You just put it into the sand and then rock it back and forth, and it slides down because it's just a small piece of metal or you know a thinner piece of metal it goes down into the sand. And as long as you build it right, I have had I've had them bend, but I've not had them break when a big rod or big um, fish takes it now the pvc ones like the pure pvc ones that go all the way down they're actually heavier than the rod holders that i'm describing with the metal and everything they're heavier and i've had those get ripped out of the sand before because you can only get those so far down and there's not a ton of resistance as far as like the lateral uh, force being exerted on it so keep that in mind when you're buying sand spikes is how much do you trust it because you're trusting your combo with it and nick if you're still here i know nick has lost a combo uh, we were fishing out of Volano about two years ago. It's when I caught my bull red and when I hooked that tarpon. We were fishing out of Volano about two years ago, and uh, the surf was coming up really fast. We were fighting this bull red. He was helping me take pictures and stuff. And we look over, and his rod holder's on the ground, and his combo's gone. I've had the same thing happen to me. You know, fishing, minding my own business, grab a sandwich, eating some lunch, look at my rods, four rods, look away for about a minute, look back. One rod holder is on the ground and the combo is gone. It's in the water, it's gone. Okay, it's gonna happen. So that was one of the things that kind of uh, inspired me to make maybe a different rod holder. But make sure when you put your sand spike in the ground, or your rod holder in the ground, you give it a good tug, good wiggle. That thing shouldn't move a whole ton. If you can move it, once you put it in the sand, if you can grab it at the base or like about halfway down, and move it and it comes out of the sand, a fish is gonna do that, no problem. Cause you're not only are you fighting the fish, you're fishing, or you're fighting the tide and you're fighting the ocean. So keep that in mind whenever you're putting your sand spikes in the sand, unless you're gonna be standing right next to it the entire time, which we all know is not gonna happen, okay? You're gonna go grab a drink, you're gonna talk to somebody, you're gonna be fighting another fish, whatever, okay? Make sure that your combo and your rod and your reel, you are trusting that sand spike to hold your entire gear in the sand as you're fighting a fish. So keep that in mind whenever you're out fishing, you're out doing stuff. Take a drink here. If you guys have any questions on anything, please let me know. Shane Turner says, I like the stream. Does anyone here know anything about land-based shark fishing over here? I'm from the Panhandle and it's a different world over here. Absolutely it is, Shane. Thank you for tuning in to the channel. And I do plan on doing a podcast on shore-based shark angling in Jacksonville specifically. Um, there's a combo or there's a um, class you have to go through. You have to get a shore-based shark angling permit. That's in the entirety of Florida, so you probably already have it, but totally different on the Jacksonville side as opposed to the Panhandle. Water's way different, surf's way different, beaches are way different. But 
back to what I was saying because I'm getting off on a tangent again, is uh, getting started surf fishing. What, what, what was I saying? Oh, God. oh, sand spikes. So once you get your sand spike, make sure that when you put it in, you're trusting your rod and reel to it. If you don't trust it, go get a different one, put it in further, whatever you need to do, or just stand there and hold it. That's always an option. If you don't want it, if you don't trust your sand spike, you decide it's not going to work, whatever, you you are more than welcome to stand there and hold it. I see old guys doing that all the time. Um, so one of the uh, big things that uh, a lot of people kind of encounter as I'm telling them all this or I'm saying all this is they thinking, oh my God, I got all this stuff. I need a tackle box. I need weights. I need a rod. I need a reel. I need a line. I need rigs. I need a cooler to keep stuff in, you know, my drinks, my fish, whatever. How am I going to get this all down at the beach? Well, you can do what I did for about 10 years, which is just carry everything. I carried everything by hand. I had four rods in one hand. I had four rod holders in the other. I had um, the cooler in one of those two hands. I usually alternated as I was walking just because I didn't have anything to do and it was heavy. And then I had a backpack tackle box. It was insane. I don't know. <laughs> I... I don't know why I did that. I really didn't have any other option. That's why I did it. But I carried everything by hand, and it was insane. One of the biggest things that changed my surf fishing experience was getting a surf cart. You don't have to get a fancy surf cart. Again, if you want to, by all means, go spend that money. If I could get one of those $300 surf carts with the big balloon wheels, I would have it in a heartbeat, but I don't have a way to transport it. So my option is if you've got a car, you know, a sedan, a Passat, an Accord, um, an Acura, whatever, Go get yourself a folding beach cart. They sell them at Walmart. They're like 50 bucks, right? Mine's blue. It's got decent tires on it. They're not great. I'm not going to lie to you. They're not great. In soft sand, I do kind of have to drag it. But it's got wheels on it. It moves. I can fit a cooler, my big tackle box, four rods, four rod holders, everything I need, my camera gear, my tripod. I can fit everything in there, no problem. And then as I'm going through the parking lot and whatnot, I'm all good to go. And then once I get past the soft sand... I'm on hard sand and I'm good to go. I can go anywhere I need to on the beach. It's outstanding. Surf cart, surf cart, surf cart. Highly suggest if you're gonna get started into surf fishing. First time you go and you just wanna kinda of give it give it a try, take your rod reel combo and a single cooler, and maybe a little baggie of tackle. Don't really need a whole lot. But as you start getting into it more and more, and I'm sure you will because it kinda, of, it, it's addictive, is get yourself a surf cart. You're gonna be able to, like I said, you're gonna be able to put a cooler on it. You're gonna be able to put all your rods, your reels, your rod holders, your camera, anything you wanna bring with you to the beach whenever you're doing it. Even when I go out with Kimbra and we're out fishing out of the beach, I bring a little tent for us, uh, blankets, pillows, uh, the whole nine yards so that she's comfortable when I'm fishing. I have a place to relax in the shade, all that stuff. Um, let's see, da -da, what's my next point? Uh, da -da -da, sun protection, sun protection. A lot of people overlook uh, sun protection when it comes to surf fishing because you're out at the beach and most guys, and like I said, I know I did this for a long time, you just throw on some swimming trunks and a shirt, and then when you get there, you take everything off, spray yourself down with sunscreen, you're good to go. Here's the problem with that, and here's something that I learned, was that sunscreen that you're getting on your hands, all those chemicals and stuff, is then transferring to your bait, and all that's being like released as a scent in the ocean. So I don't like doing that. I don't like fiddling with the sunscreen and getting it on all my tackle and getting it on stuff and everything's oily. I just don't do it. So what I do is I get myself a nice pair of UV pants from Academy, 20 bucks, I got zip offs, you know, at the knee if I want to turn them into shorts halfway through the day, I get too hot or anything like that. And then I get long sleeve UV shirts as well from Academy again, 15, 20 bucks. Um, I wear a buff, hat, sunglasses. So when I'm out there, I am head to toe covered. I don't have to worry about sunburn. I don't have to worry about sunblock. 100% good to go. Uh, Lonesome Not I says, catch a jack or ladyfish, cut off its tail for shark, and it's good to go in St. Augustine. Yes. Yes, that is an outstanding uh, bait for shark. Um, ladyfish is one of the single best baits that you can use in the surf, whether it's cut or whole. Ladyfish is an outstanding bait. Can't tell you guys how many fish I've caught using ladyfish's bait. Um, jacks as well. Jacks are an outstanding bait because they're very bloody, they're very oily, they give off a lot of scent, they move a lot. Excellent bait if you're going to be shark fishing. Uh, do I ever fish around the town center? I do fish around the town center. Are you asking for fresh water or salt water? Because I've done a lot of um, intercoastal fishing in Jacksonville, and I'm going to be doing more because hopefully I'll be getting a new kayak shortly. You guys keep an eye out for that. 
Um, but I have fished the town center. I've gone bass fishing out of the Dick Sporting Goods there, as well as behind the uh, Best Buy and the not REI. What is it? Um, it's the surf or the uh, the fishing store over there. Shoot, what is it? What's it called? It's gonna drive me nuts now. Um, oh, I can see the store. I, I was just there. I, just, I can't think of it. Anyways, um, yes, I've been fishing there. Caught some bass there. Uh, you've been hitting Huguenot. All right, so Shane Turner says, I've been hitting Huguenot with some casting rigs for shark. It seems to be too shallow. I kayaked a bait out pretty far and no luck. I presume it has to do with the temperature. Okay, so Huguenot, uh, I have not fished a ton, but if you want to catch, if you're looking for shark, if you're looking specifically to go shark fishing, I'm going to recommend two beaches to you. One is going to be Volano St. Augustine, which I know I said two, and that's technically two, but Volano St. Augustine, uh, those are great beaches to fish for shark. Reason being is because it gets very deep very quickly, and you can kayak a bait 100 yards out, and you're in about 20, 30 feet of water, depending on where you're at. Um, if you want to um, go to a different beach, let's see, Volano St. Augustine, and then you've also got um, Little Talbot Island, or Big Talbot Island, up there by Amelia. Uh, that's a great one. I've got a couple videos on those. Um, I'm trying to think the exact bridge where I go to. Let me pull it up just so I don't give you the wrong information. But uh, this is another place. Nick and I actually went out here to this beach that I'm thinking of, and we spent a, or I should say he, he spent a good time pulling people off the beach because they were getting stuck and uh, we couldn't get to where we wanted to fish because everyone was stuck in our way in the sand. I'm sure Nick, if he's still here, he remembers that. Um, all right, let's take a look at it here. Amelia Island, okay? So, yeah, you've got... Let's see, that's Amelia Island, and then that's Little Talbot, I believe, or is that Big Talbot? I can never remember. Um, but... Uh, da -da -da. So... I don't know if that's going to pull up or if that's going to show or if it's too bright. Uh, no, it's not. Uh, let, let me ch let me change my camera angle real quick. All right, let's try that. All right, there we go. All right. So, good lord, y'all. It's my work. All right, so right here, that's Amelia Island. So you come across this bridge. This is by this is Little Talbot Island or Big Talbot Island, I believe. So you come over here, you come across, and then you can actually drive down the beach here. Nick and I were about here, and he caught one of the biggest, tom or not one of the biggest, but the biggest pompano I've ever seen in my entire life off that beach, and a lot of people go shark fishing there. I've got a lot of friends that fish St. Augustine, Volano, and then Little Talbot slash Amelia Island for big sharks, and they have a lot of luck around this time of year. Uh, Mike Smith says he's trying to fish Trout Creek for crappie this weekend. Do you have any tips for that, or any places I can catch crappie around Jacksonville? Yeah. Uh... Pretty much any freshwater, ponds, lakes, streams, anything like that that you guys can find in Jacksonville is going to have crappie in them. They're going to be very timid. A lot of people fish for them. You're gonna, they're very pressured. You're going to have a hard time catching them, but they're definitely there. Shane Turner says, yeah, shark is my passion. I showed up first time fishing in Jackson, caught a 12 to 15 pound drum in the inlet. I like the challenge of the gray guys more. I really appreciate the tips. Yeah, of course, Shane. Always happy to help. Um, make sure you click that subscribe button. Anybody that's here and that hasn't, I'll be doing this every week, and I think the next episode I'm going to do is going to be shark fishing, and I might have a uh, guest on to kind of help me with that. But um, one of the best places and sources of knowledge for you, if you have not been, Shane, is go to Strike Zone Surf Fishing over there on Beach Boulevard. Check it out. They've got a ton of information there. Talk to the guys there. Ask them, hey, want to start surf fishing from the beach, what do I need to do? They're going to have castable rigs for you. They're going to have baits, hooks, all the information that you need to get started going, and uh, they'll be able to help you out. Um, this time of year, I've had really good luck with hooking up into shark using cut mullet and not even big piece of mullet. I've caught mullet this big, cut them down into pieces about two, three inches long, thrown that out on a four-aught circle hook with a uh, fish finder rig, and I have lost more fish than I'm willing to admit just because I have um, been cut off or I did it wrong but I've hooked a ton of sharks this year um, not on my shark rod mind you that's why I lost them because I was looking for uh, drum or red drum and some other fish but I ended up hooking sharks and stuff and losing them based off of that 
Uh, Goldeneye, are bait cannons worth it if you're not targeting sharks? Bait cannons. Um, are you referring to the little thing that goes around your rod that you wrap your line around and you hold it and then you cast it and it kind of holds your rod or holds your line for you instead of you holding it with your finger? Or are you referring to the air compressed cannon that literally shoots like frozen chunks of bait out there for you? Let me know which in the comments below. <laughs> um, do, do, do. But um, bait cannons, I think that's what they're called. The ones that it goes on your rod and you kind of zip tied to your rod and then you put it through, you wrap your line around it and then that holds it on a metal um, pin instead of you holding it with your finger. Compressed air cannons that shoot. Okay, so those are a bit insane in my opinion. I don't, I've never seen somebody actually use them out at the beach. Um, I think that they're kind of gimmicky. I don't think that they have a real place for surf fishing. Um, you can just as easily get a bait out there with a kayak or cast it out there. But if you're not fishing for sharks, there's no reason you should be using those. Anything that you're trying to target is going to be within 50 yards of the surf. Or even, I guess, Pompano could be as far as 100 yards. Most people can't even cast 100 yards. Um, so most of what you're going to be targeting is going to be within 50 yards of the beach. So you really don't have to cast that far. You really don't have to get anything out that far. So I, I think that they're really cool. I think they're a neat um, kind of idea, but I think it's very gimmicky. I think it's just kind of like, like I, I would use one. I would definitely make a video with one because I think it'd be cool to do. But would I use it every time? Absolutely not. 100% I would not. Um, let's see. Uh, to, to, to wrap up review before we move on to questions and answer, which I know I've been doing this whole time. Anyways, um, get yourself a decent rod from Walmart. It's the Daiwa. Let me look it up real quick just so I can tell you guys. Uh, all right. Let's see here. So here's one. It's from Walmart. It's called the Daiwa FT Surf Spinning Rod. Okay, you can get a 10-foot one. Um, fast action, medium power, two pieces, 20 bucks. Go grab that, okay? Your Pen Pursuit 3, I suggest 5,000 to get started. That's gonna run you about 50 bucks. Slap that on your rod, good to go. Split it up with some 20 pound mono. Color, doesn't matter. Don't care what anybody tells you. In Jacksonville, it doesn't matter because our water is cloudy and murky as all hell. I've used red line, blue line, clear line, yellow line, green line, um, bright pink line. I've used all kinds of line. I'm not having any issue because our water's so dirty here. It really doesn't matter. The fish can't really see it that well anyways. Um, get yourself a high-low rig, chicken rig, tree rig, whatever you want to call it. Nothing flashy, no wire, no nothing. One-aught or two-aught uh, offset circle hooks for the each limb of the tree or each you know high-low rig. Four-ounce Sputnik weight. Get yourself some fish bites, some fresh dead shrimp. Cast it out there. You're going to start getting your fish, no problem. Good to know, thanks. I was looking into making one, but I don't fish shark. Yeah, I mean, like I said, you can definitely buy one. You can definitely make one. You can do whatever you want. I think it'd be kind of cool, but it seems kind of intense um, to use every time because then you got to bring a compressor or at least a holding tank, anything like that. Not really worth it, in my opinion. But you got your rod, you got your reel, you got your bait, you got your rigs, you got your weight, you got everything you need. Get yourself a cart if you want that and make sure you have a nice sand spike. Once you guys have all that, you are ready to start fishing. You are ready to get out there. You are ready to start catching fish. They're not going to be huge fish, but, well, let me say that. 90% of it isn't going to be huge fish, but I've hooked tarpon on fish bites. I've hooked bull reds on fish bites. I've hooked a four pound, or a four pound, a four foot shark on a little piece of shrimp, you know, yay big. So you, you definitely have the opportunity to catch a wide variety of different species, sizes, different kinds of fights, all kinds of stuff on exactly what I just told you. Um... Let me know you guys if you guys have any questions in the comments right now. We're going to move on to the questions and the answers section. Uh, thank you guys, everybody, for tuning in. Seven viewers, that's awesome for only my second podcast. Like I said, I'm going to be doing this every week, Monday at 7 p.m. Eastern. Make sure to tune in. We're going to have a different topic every single week. I'm going to be doing some intercoastal fishing tomorrow at Palm Valley. I'm going to be going out and trying to do some red fishing and some sheep's head fishing. Which you guys have been following me, you know that I've not had any luck with sheep's head fishing lately. But 
I uh, have caught some really nice reds out there, so I'm going to try that tomorrow, see if I can't hook up. I'm going to be going out with my kayak. It's not my new kayak. I'm hoping to get a new kayak, uh, but I've got a Pelican Catch 100 right now. Hoping to upgrade here shortly to a better kayak. 45 minutes. That's pretty good. That is pretty good. Who all is here? I want. Do. Oops, not what I wanted to do. No, no, go back, abort, yeah, abort, out. abort. Turn it off. Does it show me support your role for that? No. Does it show me who's in here? Participant, there we go. Well, now it says I don't have anybody. What? <laughs> That's weird. Um. <laughs> quick poll will throw up if anybody's got any questions like I said now is the time to ask if not I'll be wrapping it up here in the next uh, come on what time is it probably wrapping it up in the next five minutes or so shark fishing is my passion I showed up oh no I already read that uh, Shane have you ever do you eat shark or do you just um, you just catch them I personally love eating shark shark is one of my favorite things to eat uh it's very tasty very good i love eating and catching shark legal limit make sure you check the regulations but love eating shark love catching shark absolutely delicious i think a lot of people skip and pass on eating shark for whatever reason Thoughts on the Pen Fierce 3. Was looking to buy a 6,000 series 9 foot to get into surf fishing, but the 8,000 series for 10 feet is only $10 more. Okay, so I went over that a little earlier. The 8,000 series, or the 8,000 size rod, is a bit much if you're just getting started into surf fishing. Um, it's, it's definitely one of those things like, the 5,000 size reel or the 6,000 size reel, in my opinion, is perfect for surf fishing just because it's going to hold whatever line you need it to, but it's not going to be so bulky that you can't get it out there. If you want to get the 10 foot one, if you want to get the 10 foot combo and um, get the 8,000 size reel, by all means you can. I still suggest the 20 pound mono on there, which you're gonna be putting a ton of line on there if you get the 10,000 or the 8,000 size. But then that leads to more things in the future where you've got the versatility. If you wanna start using that 8,000 for a little heavier, a little stronger size um, fishing, you definitely can. Let me go ahead and pull that up for you real quick so I can give you the specs and rundown on it. Let's see. Pen, oh, I'm sorry, this is the Pen Fierce 3. Uh, Pen Fierce 3, again, great rod, great combo. Uh, it goes Pursuit, Fierce, Battle, if I'm not mistaken. That's the order. So you've got the Pursuit is the bottom one, the Fierce is the mid-range, and then the Battle is the highest range. Let's look at this here. Pen Fierce 3 combo. Let's take a look at this. 8,000, 10 feet... So it's going to have a heavy power, which is nice. Let's take a look at this here. All right, so you're going to have 30 pounds of drag, which is pretty good. Um, fast action with a heavy power. So it means you're going to be able to fling baits out there because the rod tip is going to go. It's also going to be sensitive enough so you can see the baits, but it's going to have the backbone to reel in anything heavy that you need to. I think that overall, that's not a terrible starter if you want to spend the money for it. Um, I think that it's definitely going to kind of give you a little bit of versatility when you're first getting started. Like I said, that's going to, once, you, like, it, this is a good combo if you think you're going to get started directly into surf fishing. Um, so you're going to get started, you're going to go, and then you know, like, oh man, I'm going to start doing heavier style fishing for, you know, big bull reds or sharks or anything like that. This is going to help you. You could even catch tarpon on 8,000 size reel. Let me take a look at this. Is the pen, I can't remember. The reason I suggest the Pen Pursuit 3 is because I know that it's sealed. Um, let me take a look, see if the Pen Fierce. I don't know if it's sealed or not. I'm assuming it is because the Pen Fear or the Pen Pursuit 
There's three. One, four, five, all right, so yeah, the Fierce 3 is actually not sealed from what I am uh, seeing. So that's, that's pretty significant. Yeah, it's not, the Pen Fierce 3 is not sealed. Wow, but the pen pursuit three is? I can't be right. Yeah, the pen pursuit three is sealed, but the pen fierce three is not. Wow. Huh. How about that? That's genuinely surprising. Uh, let's see, a 4,000, like let's say you get a 5,000 size Pen Pursuit 3. The Pen Pursuit, West Marine, that's the name of the store, the town center I couldn't think of. Uh, let's see. Pen Pursuit 3 combo Let's see if there's a 10 foot combo for the pen pursuit 3 now let's see they got them at Dick's sporting goods take a look at this here see what we can find All right, so you can only get the Pen Pursuit 3 in an 8-foot rod length, which isn't awful. Um, how much is it? doesn't even say. Interesting. All right. Um, but, oh, 90 bucks. Okay. So the Pen Pursuit 3, if you want just the reel, how much is just the reel? Let's take a look at this here. So just the reel, 45 bucks at Walmart for the Pen Pursuit 3. It's a 5,000 size, and that is sealed. Uh, Brady Williams, welcome. Brady says, know any good snook or tarpon spots in Jacksonville? Yeah, if you guys want tarpon, especially this time of year, head up to Fort George Inlet. Tarpon rolling all over the place. Fort George Inlet, Little Talbot Island, um, Volano. That's everywhere that I have hooked a tarpon. I've never landed a tarpon, but those are the three spots that I have hooked a tarpon. So you guys definitely check that out. I'll look into the Pursuit 3. Appreciate the thorough answers. Great channel. Thank you so much, GoldenEye. I am here to aim, or I'm here to aim to, good Lord, I can't even talk. I am here to please. I'm here to answer everything I can and give you guys as much knowledge from my experiences as I possibly can. If you guys want to know anything, you guys have any questions about anything at all, let me know. Uh, we're going to be wrapping this up here in about seven minutes. But I need to, do I need to get any lures for tomorrow? <laughs> I don't even know. Um... But uh, if you guys ever see me out on the surf, by all means, 100%, please, 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 please uh, come up to me. Say hello. I love interacting with sponsor, or sponsors. I love interacting with uh, subscribers, people that fish. Even if you don't know who I am or you, you just see somebody out fishing, don't be afraid to go up and talk to them. Uh, I have a lot of people come up and talk to me, and I love talking to people, answering questions, everything I can. All right, let me see here. Pen Pursuit 3 is sold out. Let's see if I can find it on Amazon. Doo, 
do do pen pursuit three. Wow, this only has it in the. There's a pen pursuit four now. What? I didn't know there was a pen pursuit four. This thing looks insane. How much could I get a four? Oh, okay. Right, let's do pen pursuit three. Oh, come on. Tackle to right. Nice. Okay. Um, this is the uh, rod I was talking about. I'll share this with you guys. It's not gonna. It's not gonna let me. Never mind. It's not gonna let me. Just search uh, Daiwa Orange or Surf Rod. It'll pop up. And then Pen Pursuit Three. Here, I'll put this in the comments so you guys can find it. Uh, Pen Pursuit. Three, Daiwa FT Surf Rod, oh, Road, uh, 20 pound mono, mono pre tide rig, four ounce Sputnik weight. There you go. It's everything you need. Shark fishing for next week's episode. I have four people said yes, and nobody said no. There you go. Tune in next week to talk about shark fishing. Alrighty, guys, we're going to be wrapping this up um, in three minutes. So if you guys have anything, now is the time to ask. And I need to start getting all my gear ready for tomorrow because I am going to surf fishing. Not surf fishing. Not surf fishing. Kayak fishing. I gotta get all my batteries charged. I gotta get all my cameras charged. Oh, buddy. Oh, oh buddy. That was a pretty good episode, I think. It is charged. That is charged. Oh, fantastic. There's these. Where am I at? That's mildly concerning. Where the hell are all my batteries? <laughs> yeah. oh. I have no idea where all my batteries are. There's the charger over there, but where's the actual battery? Whoops. I hope this episode uh, helped you guys, gave you some insights, gave you some knowledge on how to surf fish, and um, you guys get out there, catch some fish, you know what I'm saying? Appreciate everybody for tuning in. I will see you guys next week, Monday, 7 p.m. Eastern. We'll be, we'll be going over shark fishing, rigs, rods, reels, locations, everything you need to know. Tune in uh, this upcoming Thursday. I'm going to be having a video go live. Let's see, what is the video? I'll give you guys a little preview here about my content. What do, what do I have live? What do I have going live this Thursday? Let's take a look at it here. This Thursday... Beach fishing the mullet run, we uh, bag limit. So Kimber and I went out fishing, we got a bag limit. Fishing the mullet run, and I give you guys all my uh, laydowns, tips and tricks 
and what we do, what we catch. So tune in this Thursday and next week. I'll see you guys.